Okay, here we go. Exciting day. We're gonna get to call Chris Doe. Hold on, hold on. Hey, there he is. How are you? Hello, Good hello. to see you. How are you, Chris? Yeah. Good to see you again, man. Um, where, where are you at? Are you in the States or are you on tour? Already? I'm in the States. I'm at you? home right now. Awesome. And uh, where, where yeah, are Yeah, I'm in uh, Pasadena. Yeah. Oh, wow. They wrote uh, songs about that place. Yeah, that's a good thing. Well, thank you for of your course. time, man. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I think uh, I think a lot of people are quite excited um, on the fact that you're going to be touring, that you're going to hit all these amazing cities in, in Europe and beyond, and obviously also hitting us up at Skybox here in Amsterdam. Um, Maybe we should give the people a little bit more time okay. to, you know, flow into the live, and and I can ask you about that amazing book collection behind. You. Did you read all of it? <laughs> I think I've read like one portion of one shelf. That's about as much as a yeah. One yeah. portion of one shelf. That's dope. You can like let me <laughs> the rest for you by now. Just have it summarized and colorized, and, and you know, you'll be fine. Um, so first of all. Well, I think, well, obviously all the followers from your account, et cetera, know exactly who you are and what you do. But I think uh, a big portion of ours do as well, but there might be some people who don't. So if I were to introduce you, uh, I could I could try, but I think the best thing is just to ask you, what would be the perfect pitch to introduce Perfect. Chris Thank you so Doe? much. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Doe. In case you don't don't know me, I'm a loud introvert. In a previous life, I was a graphic designer, an entrepreneur, and now I'm an educator. And this is what I do full time with a team of about 13 people. And we do this mostly through social platforms on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, to try to disseminate information to help creatives uh, make a living doing what they love. That's what I try to do. I try to teach people business skills, marketing skills, so that they can get a piece of that pie and to value themselves. Cool. And actually, so it, it's sort of like you, you've done it yourself. Uh, I think as a person, you've done it yourself also in, in, uh, in a team and with your company called The Future. Um, and I think this is kind of funny because I'm pretty sure you don't notice, but my designer at one of the companies that I, that I started, he actually came back to me one day and he said, we were doing a, a brand book, I think, um, on rebranding of some coffee brand mm. here in, in Amsterdam. And he was like, well, we can start from scratch or um, I can go and buy like this package um, that is supposed to help you out. So it has like a base of a brand book in it and it has all these explanations and things in it. And that was the first time I ever heard oh, wow. the name of, of the future. Um, and then he told me like, yeah, you, know, you got to check this guy out, Chris Dose. I think a few years ago, I just started following you because my designer bought a brand book to make to rebrand coffee or something it's always something random um but the reason i remember this is because he came back and he said i think this might be the best product i ever bought i can't believe he uh he didn't overcharge i was like i i paid a fair amount for it and then i got like five oh super I expected um and then i knew like you know this is some someone that really knows what he's doing but also enjoys what he's doing i think you guys are giving out amazing uh amounts of free game as they would say but also whenever you make a product and you actually have to pay for it that it when it's overwhelmingly good i think that says something about the person so i've been diving into all your stuff i've, I've checked out a lot of videos that you've done and i was like wow this is i think it's impressive how much knowledge you guys get mm. to put in a few minutes um i i can't even imagine what hours of that or like a whole workshop would feel like i think it's like you know getting re-educated in one day so that should really work. Um, so thanks for pitching that. Is it something new for you? Is this tour? Because you're doing a, yes. a European tour, Yes, right? European tour. tour. Is that the first It time? is on this kind of scale, for sure. We've done a European trip before. It was organized by somebody else, by my friend Dot Lung. And we were able to visit four or five cities. Um, but they're all very different. So it wasn't as concentrated as this is. And the inspiration for doing a European tour came from a, a new friend of mine, Jason Sultan, who runs a, a, an agency in Australia called No BS. He had me doing a three city tour. And I love that experience of being able to do something over and over again, because at the end of the tour, 
I got even better than when I started and I love learning. And so one of the lessons that I would love to share with your audience and your community is this. To me, to be an entre entrepreneur, if you're doing it right, means you're a great educator. You're, you're educating your board of directors. You're educating the public about your mission, your products, and your services. You're educating your managers and your team. You're trying to te teach the world a different way of doing things. And it doesn't mean that it has to be one way or the other. You could do it in a very different way. And so uh, as a teacher, as, as someone who identifies as a teacher, I need the opportunity to be in front of people, to teach them, to see where the friction lives, why they're struggling with a concept, so that I can work with them to figure out the unlocks. And that's really important to me. And there's an expression that I use a lot. It says that when one teaches, two learn. So the teacher learns sometimes, arguably, more than the student. Yes, and it's student. beautiful. And I love yeah, personal development good. and growth. So when I'm out there in front of people and I, I can see, like, even if they don't express it verbally, I can see that they're getting stuck with something. And then I have to sh uh, uh, shift into a different mode and say, okay, something's not connecting with you. And I'm going to just improvise and, and do something on the spot. And I love that aspect of it. So that's, that's why we're doing this. And we're doing something quite ambitious. Eight cities, uh, 11 workshops, and maybe a ninth workshop. I don't know. It's just getting out of control. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> so is it too much to ask? Like, if you, do you know them all? Yes, yeah, I can, Could you can try. So we're going to start with London. There's Berlin. There's uh, Barcelona. There's Bucharest, Porto. Warsaw, Amsterdam, of course, and then Stockholm, which we added kind of last minute. Ooh, man, that that sounds like a like an amazing trip. Like being from Europe, yeah, I've been to all those places. Actually, you're gonna have an amazing time. Not just people wise, culture wise, food mm. wise, like all of I'm it. Looking forward to it. Fire, I think. Yeah. So on the 19th of April, um, you're actually uh, doing the one in Amsterdam, which uh, which is at Skybox. There it is. I see, I've seen it. Yes, I've seen it. It looks Skybox. beautiful. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. We have we have an amazing view over the whole city. Um, and the thing I like is is you're going to do it by daytime. And then afterwards, when we're having drinks, when the sun will set, it's going to mm -hmm. be amazing over here. So I think that's kind of cool. We made a really fun space for everyone uh, to be here. It's sold out, um, which I think is amazing. That, that really flew by. So that's cool. I think there are still some ways of being part of it. You could still win a ticket um, by checking out the Skybox account and figuring out how to get one of these uh, uh, free things to go. But, you know, I, I think it's amazing. I think um, eight might just be a start for you. It, it, I, I see it evolving into you never, you know, being in Pasadena <laughs> again. Let's just do r it could be, right? Up the yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, why not? It, this should be kind of fun. Um, I know you've actually yeah. been to Amsterdam yes. before. Is it, I love this city. like the city? city. Look, I'm wearing my scotch and soda shirt right now, just let you know, right? Hey, this is a, a Dutch brand, is it not? Scotch and soda? Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So two of my yeah. favorite clothing brands uh, is G-Star and Scotch and Soda, and they're both based out of the Netherlands, I believe. So, uh, Did you ever see the G-Star um, headquarters That's... here? The, the actual building. Okay, so when you're in oh, Amsterdam, I'm that'd be amazing. Sure we drive past that thing. So they build like a, a glass yeah. hangar, mm. like an airplane hangar as an office. It's absolutely insane. And they throw parties there during Amsterdam dance events. So there's a, a whole bunch of reasons to have fun over there. Um, so cool. So besides, you know, the fashion brands, is there something you really like here? Did you hang out somewhere? Or is there, we don't really have amazing Dutch cuisine, but yeah. we do other foods very well. Um, is there something you look forward to to doing here in Amsterdam besides meeting up all with all these cool people? My number one priority workshop? is to meet with people. And when I held a a kind of a, a short last minute um, meetup, I was overwhelmed with the positive support and a lot more people showed up to the meetup than I could have imagined. And so it created all problems for us at the mm -hmm. hotel, which we we're meeting up at. I thought seven people were going to show up. I think 45 people showed up. And so it was, it was wild. It was fun. It was cool. And, and everybody in Amsterdam is super cool. I love the, the, the waterways, the canals. And just uh, one of my friends um, took me on, on a trip with my son uh, around the canals. 
Now you you're all used to this, but it was freezing cold. I think we got sick because we we're just blasted oh, yeah. with so much cold wind, and, and they're like, "Oh, this is just another day." I'm like, "Well, we're not prepared for this." Got to see Anne Frank's home uh, and and the museums. It's it's an amazing place, and I like that. Uh, if this is true, there are more bicycles than people. That's a pretty cool culture. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's more bicycles in mm. the canals than there are people, mm. uh, I think. So no, that, that should, I think we're going to have a good time here, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people will come and meet up. Speaking of which, um, these workshops that you do, these people that you meet up with, and, and like what type of people, um, who is it mm. for? Like what type of vibe are we looking for? What type of people really connect with? I think mostly entrepreneurs, um, creative entrepreneurs more specifically, who are maybe a year to five years into their business. They've, they've gotten some validation that there's a good product market fit, but they're hitting all kinds of um, so challenges and barriers in their growth and trying to maintain sustained growth. They're looking for ways to develop a sales pipeline to price their products and services better and to innovate in their business. And that's who I'm hoping who are ready to show up and to get the work done. Um, I don't, I, I, yeah, you, you mentioned awesome. already that the workshop is sold out. The only way you can get a ticket is to win one right now through Skybox. I believe that's the only way you can get a ticket. So I'm not here to sell or to pitch anybody anything because we can't take on any more people. That's my understanding, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah just information and yeah. you know getting excited about about you guys coming over so there's a whole bunch of people that are also asking me always like will the uh workshop be a little bit like the videos that we see or or you know what is oh, the question of what's in there will that be those role plays that you do right like i think there's a difference between uh, answering something by email <laughs> or actually being confronted <laughs> by you when you're negotiating price or yeah. Doing all these things, so, uh, yes, it's, it's going to be pretty different. There are parts that will be the same. I'm the same person. I have the same energy. So maybe I have more energy in person. Some people are like, oh, my gosh, can we dial that down a little bit? Because I get excited to talk to people. And you know this. When you're producing content by yourself, which is typically what happens when I record content, I don't enjoy that at all. There's no energy that's being reciprocated to me. Now I'm having a conversation. Yeah, like make a right. Now I'm having a conversation with you. It's better than doing it by myself, but it's still very different than being in the same room as you. I think something unique happens, right? Because I've been wondering this myself. When we listen to a record or an MP3 that's streaming to us, there's an experience that we have with the energy that's being transmitted through audio frequency and wavelengths. But then we pay a lot of money. And we, we put ourselves into a concert hall to listen to the same artist perform the same song, not as well. But why do people do that? I think they do it for a couple of different reasons. One is there's a communal aspect to it, like the people around you, that we get to share a moment, a space, and a time, and it, it like hardwires into our brain. And years later, when we're old and gray and ready to, to move on to our next life, we can reflect back on that fondly and say, that was a profound moment, a connection with other humans. But I think there's something else that's happening below, below our level of consciousness, which is the wavelength, the sonic power of the speakers and, and the person singing and yelling into the mic. It hits you and it hits you different. Like everything is energy, right? So these sonic, the, these um, audio waves that are coming at you are coming at you with a different level of intensity. And so I think something magical happens. Oh, man. I think you're right. I was literally this week watching another one of those videos oh, yeah. where they put sand on a plate yes. and then play music. Um, and at every note actually transforms yes. the sand into different shapes, like circles and triangles and stars. And it's just mind blowing. It looks, it's so perfect that it, mm -hmm. it almost looks fake, but then yeah. you know that it's nature, right? If it must be perfection is only found there. So I think it, it's so interesting. Um, and also everyone is always talking about these vibes, vibes, vibes. I, I want to go somewhere where there's good vibes, but actually music is vibration. So I, I totally agree with you, even if it's not picture like pitch perfect right. studio sound, but let, uh, but it hits, it just hits different. It, it gives you a, a special bond. And I think the same goes with, um, with inspiration or actually, you know, being in a class, um, that, that, that teaches 
teaches you something, you feel it on the spot and it, it doesn't feel diluted like when you watch a piece of content that's cool. I can I can think that's cool, but then five seconds later, you know, I'm back to watching <laughs> cat videos. So it it just doesn't right. last as long. I want to be in the moment when I'm when I'm being connected to something like that. I don't think that's why we're all so happy that this uh, this workshop is also coming here. Um, so walk me through it. How long will this workshop be? Is this like a whole day? Are we are we lunching together? How many different topics will there be? Like, it's a what is full it day. Like? And when I mean, yeah, when I say a full day, I mean eight hours together. So if you are annoyed by me, you're going to get a lot of that. Of course, you can always leave. I hope you don't. But it's broken into five 90-minute segments. So we're going to cover five major topics. And I think these are all necessary for you to uh, not only survive, but thrive in the 21st century economy, how you build a business that's robust, mm -hmm. that attracts customers. So I've broken them down to five components. One is buyer psychology, understanding the reasons why we buy, why we behave the way we do. That naturally leads us mm -hmm. to selling or sales psychology. What does it really mean to sell? Redefining it, having a different relationship with sales so that you even though you're an introvert and you're not an alpha type, you could have success in the business world if you just learn to do this in a non-confrontational, non-aggressive way. The third one is pricing psychology, how numbers affect the way we feel about products and services and why you owe it to yourself, to your team, to your family, and everyone you care about to charge more. We're going to talk about the different pricing strategies that lead into pricing psychology. Fourth and fifth is how to craft and irresistible offer to package it up in a way that it makes it impossible for someone to say no to what it is you're doing. This means, yeah, the that's right. <laughs> it means value okay. stacking and also looking at things in a very different way. How can you make the offer so small, so easy that they have to say yes, or for the customers who want everything in the kitchen sink, how you can package that and give them that extremely like white glove four seasons hotel experience. And the last one is what we'll, we're going to call like attraction marketing how you can actually start to create leads using mm -hmm. social media that should be value driven. And what Seth Godin talks about marketing is asking for volunteers to participate in a long-term marketing campaign. They want to volunteer for that. And the only reason why people would want to do that is because you're giving a lot of value. Mm -hmm. well, I love that. I think it's very interesting also that you really know how to combine the whole hands-on thing and the role play thing with the whole theoretical step by step how to um, and and that's what I'm looking forward to the most I think is how are you going to combine all this knowledge that we can uh, read also the day after and the day after and and remember on how it was to to work on that with you and how it was to actually try and answer these questions or try to negotiate with or against you or try to do all these things um because that's at least my favorite part of of you online is doing that where you see where you just see actual organic real reactions you know i don't care how good you are you have it on paper <clears throat> mike tyson always has this quote right like everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth uh which is a great quote for a boxer and i think the same about negotiations i've seen people in in the room with us they're like no we're going to ask for this and this is what it's going to be they have them on the phone and they just, you know, they change right. because the dynamics change. And you forget, you forget how to, um, you forget that the real life can just be real, real different from theoretical negotiations or even verbal email negotiations or whatever. So I, I think that's, that's the part I'm looking forward to the most, like seeing all these participants doing stuff in real life, really getting hands on with you and trying to figure out how to do this for themselves. Right. Cause that's the trick, right? You go to the, this workshop to walk away um, richer in experience, richer in knowledge, richer in confidence, and, and all these things to do it with your own with your own life. The next day, when you're off to Lord knows what are you doing after Amsterdam? Which one? I don't know. It's a crazy schedule. I, I that's all I know. It's like every day, it's either teaching a workshop or on a plane going somewhere else. So. <laughs> They basically kidnap Pretty you much. in a hotel room yeah. and shove you in an airplane, right? That's, yeah. That's just how it goes. Cool. Um, so I was just wondering, here at Skybox, we deal a lot with inspiration. That's the big big thing for us. Mm -hmm. We want to inspire the future. And so we actually ask anyone and everyone, um, you know, who or what inspires you? Is there something you look up to or you use on a daily basis 
that you could share with you know i've had the benefit of reading some of these books behind me so the easy thing is to say some of the the my, some of my favorite books and and the thoughts and the ideas behind them inspire me the most you'll see me quoting people like jim Rohn, blair and uh david Sears in my life i suppose and a whole bunch of other people. But I would say that the person who's probably shaped my personal life the most is my dad, who's still around, who I still draw inspiration from, and my former business coach who passed away last year, Kira McLaren, who taught me for over 13 years everything I know about business. So I'm constantly revisiting our conversations in my mind, the lessons that I learned, and trying to do my best to extract the most meaning mm -hmm. from it so that I can pass it on to other generations of creatives. Wow, amazing. And that, that is also just the role I think you, you grew into, is that safe to say? Like first you started as your, yourself, later you, you really started this business. Now, as you said, you know, you're an educator and doing that. Um, I think that's kind of interesting. The other question that, that is also burning, I'm pretty sure we're going to get this a lot at the workshop as well, is that with this whole AI thing, it's, it's you know, uh, I think a lot of people are either excited nervous or scared one of the three uh, of what is going to do in, in the world of design um, is that something you're going to discuss at the um, I wasn't planning on it because AI is its own topic and it is a the Pandora box of topics to talk about now of course during an interactive yeah. live workshop I will take you wherever our group wants to go so this is also very cool about live stuff and for somebody who teaches in the style in which I do I have ideas, I have toolkits, I have frameworks to teach you, I have things for you to do, role plays, scenario challenges, and we'll do those things. But if the group's like, hey, everybody, let's just stop. We just want to talk about AI. What do we need to do in, in today so that tomorrow we have a thriving business that is going to take advantage of AI? There's some amazing things, and we're only just scratching the surface. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm deep into it, but I'm just really starting this whole journey about what else we can do with AI. And our businesses will be radically transformed in a year or two years time, all of us. And if it's not, it means because you're out of business now. And so it is something that everybody wants to talk about. Um, and I, I, can, I can go there, but I wasn't planning to, to invest any real time doing it. I want us to master the core business principles. And as the AI market is emerging and, and maturing, you can take those same principles and, and ask yourself, how can a super powerful semi-sentient thing help me do this better, faster, quicker? And, and that will become really interesting. Use it as a tool, Yeah, not I think topic. so, possibly. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, so one of the things that we like here at Skybox, we do a lot of different workshops and a lot of different things. And, and my favorite thing about bringing people together is that, you know, I don't really not like the word networking. I think connecting is, is much more interesting. Um, how big do you feel is... Uh, is the importance of, of networking or linking with, with other people by doing Yes, no, like I, I'm probably a little bit different than you in that I'm very socially awkward. Like I prefer not to talk to people. I prefer not to hang out in rooms. So uh, many, many years ago when I was first starting out my business, I, I went to an, a networking event. It scared me. And I was thinking, oh, this is going to be really yeah. awkward because I don't know anybody. How do I have conversations? How do I ask people for stuff? How do they ask me for stuff? And are we going to connect and relate? Mm -hmm. But I've learned that over the years, if you don't have strong personal and professional relationships, you don't have people who are rooting for you, who are looking out for you, who are going to help you in the pursuit of whatever it is that you're doing. I believe this I believe that we're about two people away from knowing the right person who's going to radically transform our lives is that the new version of probably of separation so it's like two yeah two, two you're about two people away and in my life it's happened like this I'll give you an example just to make it real uh, grounded in reality we were working on this visual effects job for a big American company and we could not figure out how to do it we had hired really big, expensive teams to work on it, and they couldn't solve this VFX problem. <clears throat> and we we're getting kind of desperate because the clients are getting a little aggressive with us because they're not seeing the kind of progress. Everything is taking way too long. And then I walk into this room, and there's a freelance visual effects artist working in that room. And I said, and he wasn't even working on the project, so we're on a totally different project. I said, and his name is Alan. I said, Alan, mm. you know, we're struggling with this thing. I'm trying to do this. Do you know anybody? 
He goes, Chris, I, I, I don't know, but let me make a few phone calls. So that's one, one person away already. So he makes a few phone calls and he says, I talked to a buddy and I found somebody for you. His name is Riff. And, and Riff is like this CG genius. And I called up Riff and, and this is the wild part. Riff was talking to me while he was working on his car in a garage somewhere while using a computer remotely controlled by his phone. So you know that the level of like brain power this guy had was just yeah. ridiculous, right? And it turned out this yeah. one gentleman, Riff, who I did not know, and the person that he knew didn't know Alan, but Alan called this person and this, and they just connected all of us. And so Riff, as a one-person machine, did more than a team of eight people in one day than they couldn't do in a week. I know. Wow. So Riff okay. shows me a sample. Wow. He says, Chris, I don't need any money from you. I'm going to show you what I can do. Check this out. If this is moving in the right direction, let's keep talking. No obligations to hire for me. This is a great way to sell, by the way. And so I look at his work and I showed it to my creative director who's leading the project. I think we need to shift the team away from that, wind that entire team down. We need to put all of our marbles with this person. So it turns out Riff had worked on this film with Roland Emmerich called The Day After Tomorrow, which is like a post-apocalyptic film. And he's the guy who makes, yeah, I'm sure. Like he's yeah. the guy who makes like the buildings crumble and the streets buckle. He's using like math and procedural software to do this and coding things by by his hands and it was amazing. So he came in and saved the day. So when I say like you're two people away from having a radically transformative moment in your life, either personally or professionally, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, the therapist that I wound up working with came from my business coach and she was amazing. I haven't worked with any of the therapists, but when I hear stories about how the therapists work, like she's heads and shoulders above everyone else I've heard. And she transformed my life and my relationship mm -hmm. with my wife, with my children. Yeah, that's what I love about it. Like we over, well, not even over, we romanticize yes, we do. love a lot, right? So because it, it's something that we hope for and we have all these things. And you always hear like, love could be one day away. You could meet your person tomorrow. But I think you could meet a lot of different your persons yeah. tomorrow. It could be that professional person. It could be that person that will rock your world when it comes to, you know, insights or philosophy or whatever it is. I, I always look forward to that. I think everybody wants to be inspired every day. We always say it doesn't matter if you're Kanye or the queen or my mom or the next door neighbor, you just want to have that day where you run into someone or something and some, some story that touches you in a way that you think, Hey, this is growth. And, and I want to share this with someone. And I want to keep, keep this story going. Um, I think that's interesting. And honestly, I think that day here, I think the workshop that you're going to do here is going to be one of those days where people not only connect with each other, but actually also connect with a part of growth that they've been looking for and, and hopefully take that out the door. I think that's something. Uh, I think that's something. I what sure hope so. Looking for. That's good. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. So um, I also know you work with a lot of like really big, big clients, like, you know, the, the Nikes and Googles right. and, and Xboxes of the world. Um, and I also <clears throat> know that you take the time to, talk to uh, independent people or, or startups or whatever. So where do you think the biggest lessons are? On what side of the spectrum did you learn most? Is it the big gigantic ones or the new and exciting? It, in terms of like what, what kind of lessons? Well, as a, as a, um, as a designer when you went in or as a, a, an agency that took on a client like that, is it, do you find, yourself more in a teaching role when you're doing it for startups and that kind of stuff and just showing your talents and creating a product for them um, and when you are going into a big client which has tons <clears throat> of experts and tons of experience with it um, do you learn at the same pace or do you teach more mm, I which, see. Okay. which one is more fun to do? I think smart people uh, open-minded people curious people Innovative people exist both in one person company or 20,000 employee person company. And it really depends on the individual and the culture in which they're, they're brought into. So we've worked with really big corporate clients who are fairly stubborn, fairly set in their own ways. But then you will see like one director, one leader who's like, you know, we are stuck in this space and they have high self-awareness and they say, we're not going to do it this way. We love what you're doing. 
we actually want to change some of the things that we're doing. So we're, we're going to welcome your process, your ideas into this, and we get the best of all of that. And I also don't want to dismiss this because we've learned lots of things from our clients. Sometimes our clients tell us to do things that we would not want to do naturally. And our first reaction is to resist and say, that's a stupid idea. That's just you know. But every once in a while, you come across some of those clients. Like our Xbox clients are like that over at Eisenberg. They challenge us to say, you have an open canvas. Do whatever you want. And so if we don't meet that challenge, they're going to say, feel free to go crazier than this. We're going to support you in this endeavor. You know, and it's like a dog who's been beaten a couple of times by their corporate master. You, you don't feel like you can run outside the gate and, and go free. And then they tell you, no, there's the gate, the door is yeah. open. You can go. And you're like, are you sure? And, and then you take off and you're like, wow, it's amazing out here, everybody. Like you're just running like a crazy dog, right? And conversely, when you work with really small, lean companies, everybody's wearing a lot of different hats. They don't have systems in place. It's a little bit chaotic. And if you thrive in that space, mm. it can be really cool. Or it can be a giant freaking headache because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they want. They don't know how decisions are made. And so if they're just making it up, uh, writing the playbook as we go. And that could be equally frustrating. So I really think it's about finding people that you love, love that you trust, and that you value their input and allowing them to do their best work. And it goes on both sides. Like we appreciate, we love, and we value our clients. And if they do the same, I think we can come up with some really good work together. And that's the whole point of it all. That's, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and I think that's inspiring too. There's actually something just hit me when, when thinking about your story, when you went through those three different phases that brought you where you are right now. Um, there's a story that we always use, and it's a model called uh, the surfer wave ocean. Okay. And it's just something I want to share with you and see if, if it resonates with what you, what you think about it. So, when starting out as a creative, um, all the young guys and, and, and everyone that comes in, we always tell them, you, you feel like a surfer. You wake up, you grab your board, you just run towards the water, looking for a good wave, and you'll hop on it. Um, and that wave could be anything, but it's not yours because you're a surfer, and it could be that there are multiple surfers on it. The, the wave could break. It could become really big. You could, wave, you could surf the perfect one, whatever it is, but that is your role. And you do that as often as you need um, to become a better surfer. Now, after a while, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, this feels like that was your design career, right? You're, you're starting to jump on all these waves, doing all these projects, doing all these things. And after a while, you figure out, well, I might, I might, not, I might no longer be the surfer. Maybe I mm. transform into the wave. And now I need surfers to join me on this wave to make the same project possible. You're just on the other side of things. Um, and that's when you learn that, you know, do I want one surfer or multiples? That's also how you learn when you could have a brilliant wave of an idea, but if it's the middle of the night and it's dark out, the chance that someone's surfing on it, you know, you learn timing, um, which I think is interesting. And then you can be an X amount of waves until you feel like you accomplished that to the point where you, decide to become an educator um, and understand that, that by then you've done so many waves, you might as well mm. just be the ocean. So that's, that's just a little story that we always use to, um, to explain growth and creativity. First, you're, you're all about doing, then you're about creating and making, and then eventually you're about sharing and, and creating, and, and all of it you know, comes in one. And there's zero... Um, how do you say that? There, there's zero. Uh, you're not scared of no longer having new ideas because you know this ocean will hit a wave time after time. While in the beginning, I remember the first few things that I designed or created, I was like, oh my God, I need to hold on to this so bad because this is my idea that I have now. I don't, I'm not entirely sure mm -hmm. if I'll ever get another one. You get insecure. Like, is this, <clears throat> is my creativity finite? Will it ever stop? Um, and actually, eventually, I think it's just, you know, it's your character. As long as you put the real world and, and all these little aspects into it, you'll create something new. That's just who you are. That is your superpower. But um, how do you feel about our little surfer wave ocean? I like yeah. it. People are commenting in the um, chat here below that they like it as well. It's a good theory. It's a good metaphor to understand things. 
I've not thought of it like that because I'm a terrible swimmer. So I try to stay out of the ocean. I love being by water, but not in the water. So it's, it's, I think it works. And I think if I relate it to my own life, the first part of your journey is just to, to develop skill and to prove to yourself and to others that you can do something. So you spend from, from birth to about a time you graduate from college to learn a skill that you can apply that someone will give you money for. So you're the surfer. You're just, you're just happy to have a surfboard and a wetsuit just to play, right? And eventually, exactly. whatever you do, if you're successful and you, you endeavor to grow beyond that, you're going to need to recruit other people to join you in whatever mission that you're on. And the mission is not like a big capital M mission. It's just I'm on a mission to try to make beautiful design and graphics for companies that exist in this vertical. Fantastic. Well, who's with me? That's your wave. I, I totally get that, right? And eventually, if you do this really well and you're old enough and you have experience and wisdom, you, you might want to create more opportunities for people who are in the creative entrepreneurial space and then you're, you're part of the ocean at this point. You're sharing your knowledge. You're allowing other people to find their own expression and you've moved to the next level. Hopefully, we're all able to move to those levels at our own pace and achieve those kinds of uh, levels of growth. But I know some people who are very happy just to be the surfer all their lives and they're amazing at it. Definitely, yeah. And I, I think that's beautiful too. You don't have to grow. But I do think the answer to if you are afraid of being in the water, mm. become the water. That would be the end of that, I think. Um, you can't be afraid of yourself in that way. So I think um, we also had some, some questions coming in, not only here in the chat. By the way, if you have one, make sure to hit us up and we can answer some of those. Um, but we also had those uh coming in on on socials um one of them was you have a, you've had a successful career as a designer educator and entrepreneur um how did you develop skills in all of these different areas mm, that's a great question i i think and this is going to sound really weird for all the introverts that are out there i don't know if there are any tuning in right now I, I never thought of myself as much of a leader as a person who can teach and who, who can inspire other people. I was just happy to be left alone mostly, right? And I didn't think like the introverts get to have any fun in life because everybody that was an extrovert, the class clown, the jock, the, the person who's running for class president, they seem to have all the attention and the fun and the admiration of the teachers and their classmates. But there's a secret hidden power within introverts, and we didn't know it. So I'm, I'm here to be a voice for all of you, which is this, is that we're really good listeners, Ron. We really pay attention to what people are saying, but also the words that are not spoken, like their body language, their micro expressions. And so we've been observing. Now, we don't know what to do with this kind of stuff. So we dive into the world of make-believe fantasy in, in our own head. For me, at least, I read comics, uh, watched anime. Uh, I was lost in cinema and just fantasizing about all these things. So I express myself through different ways. And so now what we have is the ability to unleash some of this because of the age of social media. Because prior to like Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and all these websites that are up there, these platforms that allow us to be our own publisher, our own author and our own marketer and all that kind of stuff, we had nowhere to go with this yeah. stuff, right? It's like, who am I gonna tell my friends? So we're kind of isolated in a little room doing what it is that we do. And then there's this incredible economic opportunity that opens up and the introverts of the world start to have a voice and it's, it's powerful and it's incredibly transformative. And so the, the quiet refugee Asian American kid who could not stand his own voice is now the guy who's making like four videos a day. It's, it's just ridiculous, right? And it's because I've found that those many years of saving up ideas and observing people and things things that were said and not said, now creates for really rich material. So I didn't know it, but I've been collecting ideas. And so when I go into design, I, I drew upon my love for comics, for composition and storytelling and narrative structure. And then I was easily able to transition from two-dimensional design into motion design. And, and people would often ask me like, how do you know how to do this? Because you weren't taught this. Well, I guess all those years reading the Avengers and the X-Men comics really absorbed into to my brain and taught me about how to frame shots to make it dynamic, which allowed me to grow into the role of being a director. And if I keep advancing the story along, and then I get invited to teach, which is another part of my career, 
and I taught for 15 years at a private art school. I get to draw upon my real life work experience, my love for pop culture, my knowledge in design, and I get to bring all that stuff together. But the problem there was it was only for a handful of people. It was for eight to 10 students at most because there's a very low teacher to student or to student to teacher ratio, which works perfectly. Until I found my goal, which is I get to take all these things that I love, I get to pour them into something and pour into people so that they can walk away seeing something in a different way. I mean, that's the best thing you can hope for as a parent, as a teacher, as a friend, as a lover, a partner, is to help someone see a problem in a way they've never seen it before, to have them have a breakthrough moment. And for me, that's the reward of teaching, of content creation, and building an audience, is to actually have those moments with people. So that's how you get to be those things, I think. You have to be radically curious. You have to be a good observer of the world. And you have to have the ability to reflect and then articulate the things you've seen. Boom. Drop the knowledge right here. Well, I think that answers the questions for sure. Um, and then the advice would be, do you have any advice for young professionals trying to develop a diverse skill set? Would that be doing it one after the other or would you recommend just trying everything you like? Okay, very time? good question. The answer to that depends on where you are in your career. So I have two boys, one is 19, one is gonna be 17 in a few days. And I encourage them to try as much as possible. They're still very young people. Their brains are still forming. There's still some research that says like the human brain is still growing up until like into your 20s. And so it's important for them to expand as much as possible, to explore, because we don't know if they're interested in programming, in art, being uh, a chef or being an entrepreneur, whatever it is. So we want them to explore music, everything, as much as possible until they start to get a sense of mm. who they are. Mm. And when you do, it's time to make a commitment to decide. And this is really hard. Because it, uh, decide shares this root word called side, which is to kill, like suicide, pesticide, homicide. So the reason why people have a really hard time, yeah, Ooh. making, right, That's making a decision, right hard time to decide is because why? Because we want to keep all our options open. We don't want to kill. Yeah, you, you got to kill, kill some of these pursuits of yours for a time being, not forever. So we, may, we need to make a decision that's very hard. It's very hard to do. But we have to focus in on something. It could be marketing, sales, copywriting, whatever it is that you want to learn, philosophy, write, uh, poetry, just pick a lane and do the hard work. And because people who are looking for the easy way are going to have a hard life and people who are going to do the hard thing are going to have an easy life. And this is really critical. This is a lesson my father taught me when I was a little kid, right? So what does that mean? Nobody likes to put in the time, effort, and energy to master a skill. They go surface level, so they are competing with every single person who's ever looked at the subject before, which means quite a lot of people. But if you put in your eight, nine, 10,000 hours, as Malcolm Gladwell put it, you have a hope of becoming an authority or an expert. Like, I don't want to use that word, but that's the best word I can use right now. So that you've gotten your black belt in whatever it is that you're studying. So here's Here's where it gets real interesting. When you get to a state in which you can do what you do without having a lot of conscious mm -hmm. thought, people might refer to some kind of flow state. Then you're ready to take on other things. So those, those other interests that you had to temporarily kill, you start to open those up. So we often talk about the T skill. My T skill would look something like this. In the beginning, it was about design. I just want to be the best designer not any kind of designer i want to be a really good typographer and a graphic designer I'm not interested in web or or packaging or anything else i just want to be a really good two-dimensional typo typographic designer and when i felt like i had enough, enough depth there and if you spend four years studying something full time you can get pretty good at that and then i started to expand beyond that trunk and i started to expand out that t so i added 3d design i started adding packaging and then animation and cinematics and editing. And it turns into the, this really thick tree trunk of the letter T and it's expensive and you're allowed to grow. And so when I advise people, look at where you're at in your career. Have you put in the 10,000 hours to master something where you feel like you could do this relatively easy compared to the way other people struggle through it? Yeah, and then start to expand. But the problem a lot of people have is they jump from topic to topic they never get good at anything. Mm -hmm. And I see those people struggle in their lives. 
I think that's very interesting because uh, I'm one of those people who multitasks a lot when I was, you know, younger and I was trying to figure out how to do things. And I was just too excited about everything. I, I just really did not want to kill any talent decision or fun uh, avenue I could go down. I was just trying to do it all. And only once I figured out that you are still allowed to do everything, but just do it one by one, build a foundation and put the second one on top of there, put the second one on top. Um, that really was a game changer for me because as um, it was just a simple insight that you don't have to kill it. You have to put it on pause. You can put stuff on pause and it has to become later. Um, and that means not killing off something, but just prioritizing which one means more for you at the time or is, is more valuable to learn first or master first before you do anything else. Um, now, I'm pretty sure sure you're you're a black belt in a whole bunch of stuff but is there still something you are pursuing at the moment like are you still uh in your 10,000 hour zone on some different yeah topics? i'm i i consider myself a white belt in many things that my, many people might interpret as no you're pretty advanced like i'm dedicating all of this year to becoming the best teacher that i can so i'm literally reading books called how to teach anything or 50 strategies to boost cognitive engagement. So I'm really trying to dive deep into the art of teaching because I want to become the best mm -hmm. teacher that I can be. And so I'm going to spend that time now. So I've learned a lot of things about marketing and branding, about 2D and 3D design, sequential design. But I'm, I'm really interested in, in becoming the best teacher because maybe I don't need to learn more. Maybe I just need to learn how to be a better teacher to be more effective. Yeah, because probably you have all the knowledge. I mean, it's the same as the internet or a library. All, all of it is in there, but how do you get it to the people yeah. in the right way? I think that's very interesting to see you call yourself a white belt in teaching. Uh, I, I think the whole world <laughs> is great, but that's a good thing. Um, and then, you know, still looking forward to that 19th of April uh, to see it live. Um, how about we go through the chat? That would be lovely. Few, yeah. Uh, questions. To wrap it up for today, I think we had a beautiful hour. <laughs> I could do this all day with you, obviously. Um, but I think it's fun to to involve some of the people that are, are putting it in. So let me just scroll. Um, I have a question here. Sometimes we feel stuck and the competition in the market makes us feel overwhelmed. Have you ever felt that way? And how do you deal okay. with that situation? Now, this is the, the, the limitations of doing a live stream in which we cannot have a conversation with this person. Like we want to have dialogue. Like why are they stuck? They say that the market and the feeling is they're overwhelmed, but I, I need you to play the role of the person asking this question. When, when people say I feel stuck, okay. what part of them being stuck? Is it a creative thing? Is it a financial thing? Are they physically stuck? Like I want to get out of this city or this country and I can't, where, where are they stuck? What do you think it is? I think I'm, uh, yeah. let me just yeah. do it in first person mode. I think I'm, I feel stuck because I feel like I don't grow. I have the same amount of clients and I can't seem to break out of that uh, okay. formula. How can I, how can I grow as a, from a, a person to a, a little so bit? So what we want to do is we want to have a clear definition of where we're at and where we'd like to go so that we can build a roadmap to it. And I really believe in this. If you have a clear goal as to where you want to go, the, the techniques, the tools, and the steps to get there become self-evident. So pretend like you're still this person. What is going to make you feel like you're growing? And how can we know when you get there? What does that growth look like to you? I think growth for me would be, uh, let's say, basic. So I would like to grow uh, double digits in revenue but i would also like to grow double digits in amount of clients that i can have because that way okay I can expand my so brand. you can make up whatever the answer you want here so at the end of if you can finish this thought at the end of 2023 what is my gross billings going to be just make up any number perfect 500 and where are you today if you don't make any changes where will you end this year at um, Good. Three okay. And how many clients do you want to service in a given month? Um, that's the weird part because I like to have mm -hmm. several different clients because it makes me feel challenged and makes me feel like I can use my talent. 
So let's say I would like to work on four to five Perfect. different projects uh, at any okay. given time. So I just did some math, and I'm glad you gave me a whole numbers here to work with. You basically need to make about $50,000 a month in revenue. And if you spread that across five clients, let's just make it real easy on the math here. That means that every client that you take on, on each month needs to give you at minimum $10,000. It's radically different. Yes, Sorry, I, lost I saw that. So let me ask you the question again. In order to, do, uh, to hit your number by the end of the year, Every client that you work with in yeah. a month needs to pay you about $10,000 for every engagement. And you need five of these clients every single month. So it's probably an ongoing basis. How far away from that are you today? Are you doing, are you billing your clients $10,000 a month? No, I think I'm between five and seven K uh, per client and we're doing about okay. two to three clients. So what we have to make, we have to make a, a grown up decision here. Do we want to take on more clients and keep the price where it's at? Or would we prefer to use fewer or work with fewer clients, but charge them more per engagement? Well, if it's four to five a month, I'll still be happy. So I think we can put the uh, average price per project. Okay. What is stopping you from charging the amount of money that, that you think you're worth? I don't think it's okay. about feeling what I'm worth. I think it's about um, the type of client and what they ask for generally just stops mm. in that scope. We just keep getting five to seven K uh, projects when it comes to amount of hours and uh, okay, scope is, of the project. So where, where can I find Okay, so before we do that, we want to validate our own thinking. What evidence do you have that given that scope, clients aren't willing to pay more? Have you done a study, a survey? Have you read a report? Have you talked to 10 people who are in your space who service the same types of clients? No, I've only spoken to the clients that I have and I've been trying okay. to sell them extra, but it, uh, uh, it, mm. it only works out every now so and then. So one of two things could be true. Both could be true. One is your clients literally can only pay that amount, which I'm doubtful, or your ability to sell higher not more products, but your ability to sell and present the work as being valuable to them is, is where you need help with. So you can sell to the same client, develop some new skills about how to talk about the work and how to solve a problem for them that'll actually get them to pay more. So here's the, here's the quick test. Let's say we had um, somebody else, somebody that you really look up to, a hometown hero, somebody that you admire, an icon in the industry, and they do the same thing that you do. If they yes. walked into the office of your, of your client today, do you think they would be able to get more than you? Yes. So then you see the problem there. So it's not that the clients won't pay more. They just won't pay you more currently. So you think I need to work on the value of my personal I'm not sure what the solution is, but I know that your diagnosis is probably a little bit off, which is I need to find other clients. So usually what happens is, and, and this is a classic thing, whether we're talking about sales, about leadership, communication, most people think the problem is someone else. It's something else that's out of my control. It's the country I live in, the people I work with, the manager that's kind of like, I got to get through this manager and I can't. So they always point outwards and always looking for the answer somewhere else, something that they have no control over. Whereas most of the time, the answer is right in front of you and it's you. When you're looking in the mirror, the answer is you. That's the one thing you hope to have some control over. And so this is usually where the big unlock happens. If I could teach you to talk about the problem and the work in such a way that you felt more confident, more capable, and the client saw that from you, we have a chance of increasing your rate from five to seven, from seven to nine, nine to 15 and beyond. Now I'll give you a, a classic example. Here's a story, okay? There's a, there's a friend of mine. She is a, a, um, a, um, a mom of two kids. She lives in a rural part of the United States. So it's not like she has uh, access to big city clients, that kind of thing. And she was telling me that when she works with clients, they only pay her 10 to $15,000 maximum for this vertical. And she works a lot with authors and coaches and quote unquote thought leaders. Okay. And she said, Chris, I, I cannot charge more. And I said, that's funny because I met someone who's in your exact same space who charges twice as much as you. And she's like, there's no way that's possible. She said, look, I'll send you his website. 
And she looked at it and she confirmed with me, it's literally the exact same market, the exact same industry. So now armed with this new piece of knowledge, she had the confidence to go back and ask the same types of clients, the same communities that she was selling to for twice as much money. And to her surprise, not to mine, to her surprise, and they agreed. And so in, in transforming her thinking around this, reframing it for her, she was able to do more business in six months than she did the entire previous year. This is a real story. This is not, I'm not just making this stuff up, okay? So it turns out, oftentimes, our belief systems are the things that hold us back the most. It's not that you need a new client. You need a new you. And the best part is you can transform you as fast as you want to do this for as little money as you, as you want to spend because you just have to change your mind. And that's a super powerful thing that should give you a sense of agency, like I can do anything. It's empowering to know that. And I can tell you story after story, myself included, when I just needed to believe something to be true for it then to become true. I'll give you one more quick example because I know we're running out of time. I love that. Okay, this is beautiful. So when I, when I was uh, just out of school, I was freelancing around town and selling my time for money, booking hourly day, day rates, right? And I always thought I need to start a company. I want to start a company because I want to do it my way. Because I'm impatient, I'm headstrong, maybe a little bit too self-confident. And a business opportunity presented to me where my uncle said, let's start a business together. How much money do you need? Because I have a business partner and he could finance this thing. I said, I need $100,000, total arbitrary amount. Keep in mind, this is 1995. I am 20. It's, it's a lot. I'm, I'm 22 years old, so it was like $10 million for me, right? And I've just been living off credit card debt. So... They agreed. We, we drafted terms of agreement. They gave me a check for $5,000. They own 51% of the company because they need a controlling share. And I'm going to work. This is fantastic. So I quit whatever I was doing. I focused on building my business, built, set up a website, started to hustle, and I got work. And so here's the crazy part. They only ever gave me $5,000. They never gave me the other ninety-five. dollars and I was growing the business and we're profitable like from the day one because I knew how to get work. I knew how to run it efficiently and make money. So then this idea started eating at me. What if they never gave me the $95,000? Now I work for another person and who owns 51% of the company and they have not done anything except for mm -hmm. to give me the courage to start my own business. Luck would have it that they couldn't give me the rest of the 95 because they were busy with other things. I demanded it, so they exited out of the business partnership, and I was on my own, 100% owner once again. And I tell people the stories because I didn't need their money. I didn't need that contract. They brought no work. They brought no management. They brought nothing to me except for they you allowed me to inside. believe that I have the backup. You know, like, if, I don't know if you've ever been this, and I hope you've never have, but if have you ever been in a situation where you're physically threatened outside a bar, a gym, high school, whatever, Right? Okay, so you probably guy. have moments like this. Guys experience this more than women do. And you know it's going to be a long night if you're there by yourself. But if you have a couple of buddies who you know without question have your back, don't care what the disagreement is about, but will throw down with you to the last tooth and nail and not leave you in the ditch getting kicked and punched in the face, you can walk around with a certain amount of confidence. So for some of us, we literally need that team to be behind us. Some of us could just use the idea of the team behind us. And that's what that contract and that $5,000 deposit did for me. It was the gift of believing in myself. The best part of this, they exited. I own the company. I learned a valuable lesson and I got to keep the $5,000. So happy ending there. Boom. <clears throat> <laughs> Very well done, man. So Chris, again, as I said, I think we can talk for hours, especially in, in this uh, back and forth setting. I think it's amazing, but I think we're also going to see more of that on the 19th of April right here at Skybox when Chris and the future come through with their EU tour. I think it's going to be amazing. Eight different cities. One of them is Amsterdam. We can't wait to see you here. We, we really look forward to uh, welcoming you and your team, but also everyone that you know bought a ticket and is coming to uh, to get connected and learn all these beautiful lessons. So thank you so much um for for sharing your time and wisdom and all this cool stuff with us 
Uh, and I, I, yeah, I just can't wait, man. I, I, I'm going to see you in about two weeks. Wonderful. Forward to it. That is the real background behind you, or are you using a virtual backdrop? No, this is actually. Let's would you like do it. To, you yes, because it? I believe this is where we're going to do it, right? Yeah, it. So we're getting a little sneak preview, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Do this. Why not? Let's do this. Um, I'm going to okay. swap this thing out. So this is actually Amsterdam Central Station. We have a 360 right. view here. And this is actually our office space. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. This is a really dope quote that we like, which is here on the wall. This guy is not the limit. It's just the view. And then you get awesome. the That's the whole thing. And here in the back behind the DJ booth is where we will have you set up. Um, get you teaching behind there. There's a uh, blackboard where you can write on. We have all the tech for you to do. We're going to get shareable and writable screens Wonderful. for you to flip. And so all yeah, right. this is going to be it. You're going to set up some drinks and food by the end of the day at that part. And uh, yeah, it should be good. Uh -huh. So. Really I like the vibes energy. of the space, the view. I love the quote. So how many people can you accommodate in that space right there? Um, it really depends how we do it. I think we did parties for about 150 to 200 yeah. when we're all standing. Um, when it's seated, I think we cap it at about 100. But when it's something where you want to really interact like when you're here and you need to learn like a workshop type of thing i think 70 is the best so i yeah. think that's what we did ticket wise as well with this we just put the group we did put the the largest group that we still think will get that's the important best experience that's yes. the number that we took so uh it's, it's not going to be over squeezed it's not going to be uh, too small. Either. Wonderful. I, I mean, yeah. uh, the space looks beautiful. I'm looking forward to spending time with you there. I know many years ago, pre-pandemic, we're talking about doing something and then this crazy thing called the pandemic hit and we were able, we were unable to do it. Yeah. Of course, had to put everything on hold. So I'm, I'm glad one way or the other, we're going to do this. And maybe the universe works in mysterious ways that what was meant to be will be. And it didn't happen in one way. And here we are doing it a different way. So I, I just want to also thank you for helping us to do this and, and, and allowing us to have space with you and to experience some of the magic that you bring as well. Uh, we're so happy to host you guys. I think it's going to be amazing. So thanks for the opportunity and the energy and all the time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all there. Um, I think, you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of content That's coming from you guys right. on those days and during the tour as well. So for everyone watching this live, obviously you're already following Chris. I think that's a very good idea. Keep doing that and you'll get some cool, cool content to, uh, Wonderful. to see soon. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great night. Okay. All right. Take care. And, bye, uh, we'll everybody. Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Cool. Bye. Bye, Chris. All right. And bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.